Welcome to another video from Guitar School Live. In this video, I'll show you how to increase your productivity in Cakewalk by using your tablet and the Touch Portal app to launch keyboard shortcuts. Let's get started. To begin, you must download the Touch Portal app to your tablet and the program to your desktop. The desktop is where you set up Touch Portal and the tablet is what you use to control it. Links to both are in the description below. Setup is easy, so there is no need to cover it in this video. We'll begin by setting up a main page button to launch Cakewalk. Then, we'll set up a page and configure buttons to launch keyboard shortcuts. The first button will activate the track view by using keyboard shortcut Alt plus 1. The second button will activate the console view by using keyboard shortcut Alt plus 2. The third button will activate the undo function by using keyboard shortcut Control plus Z. And the fourth button will activate a series of actions called macros. The macro will consist of copying the data in a track using Control plus C then inserting a new track using Alt plus I, and finally inserting the copied data into the new track using Control plus V. All of these actions will happen in the blink of an eye. Let's set up our first button. When you launch Touch Portal on your desktop computer, you'll be presented with this screen. This is where you'll create buttons to run your keyboard shortcuts. To start programming Touch Portal, we'll make our first button on the main page to open Cakewalk. When you slide your mouse across the interface, you'll notice box outlines. These are buttons. Let's create our first button to open Cakewalk by clicking the first box. The screen presented is where you'll enter actions that will run when the button is clicked. To begin, let's first stylize the button. We're going to do a basic style just to give the button function. Later, I'll show you how to add graphics to the buttons. Click inside the button text box and type Cakewalk. You'll see the word appear to the left. Next, click background settings from the menu and toggle background visible to on. When you do this, you'll see the button displayed. We can change the color of the button by selecting a color from the beginning and end rows. If you select the same color for both, you'll have a solid color button. If you select different colors, your button will have a gradient. Click Save to see how your button will look. If you look on your tablet, you should see your newly created button. If you don't see it, tap the refresh icon on the tablet. If you click the button on your tablet, you'll see that it does nothing. That is because we haven't told it what to do. Click the Cakewalk button on the desktop to go back to the editing page. On the left, you'll see the Add Actions menu. At the top, you'll see Run and Open. Click it and select Start Application. The Start Application action is added to the on pressed editor. Click the three dots. This will open your file explorer. Search your drive for your Cakewalk executable and select it. Click Save. Now if you go to your tablet and press the button, Cakewalk will open. If it doesn't, click the refresh icon on the touch portal screen. Now that Cakewalk is open, Close it and let's create a second page for our keyboard shortcuts. On the Pages tab, click the plus icon to open the Create box. Make sure Page is selected. Enter Cakewalk Shortcuts as the name and click Add. Now we can begin setting up buttons to launch keyboard shortcuts. Click a button to open the on press Editor. Inside the button text box, type track view. Next, click background settings from the menu and toggle background visible to on. 
Change the color of the button by selecting a color from the beginning and end rows. Go to the Add Actions menu and click on the Input drop-down menu and select Virtual Key Press. From there, you can either use your computer keyboard or the screen keyboard to press the Alt key and the number 1. Click Add. You'll see the action in the On Press section of the editor. Click Save. For the next three buttons, we'll duplicate the track button. Hover over the track button and right click. Select copy and button. Now hover over the empty button next to it and right click. Select paste and paste button. Repeat for the next two buttons. Now that you're done pasting the buttons, click the second button and enter console in the text. Double click the key press action. Click clear. Now press the alt key and the number two. Click add. You'll see the action in the on press section of the editor. Click Save. Now click the third button and enter Undo in the text. Double click the key press action. Click Clear. Now press the control key and the letter Z. Click Add. You'll see the action in the on press section of the editor. Click Save. For the final button, we'll make a macro. Macros are a series of actions that are performed when you press a button. In this example, we'll program the button to copy a track, insert an audio track, and paste the copied data to the new track. Click the button and enter macro in the text box. Right click the key press action and select copy all selected actions. Right click in an empty space and select paste copied actions twice. Now double click the top key press action and click clear. Press the control key and the letter C. Click add. You'll see the action in the on press section of the editor. Double click the middle key press action and click clear. Now press the alt key and the letter I. Click add. Finally, double click the bottom key press action and click clear. Now press the control key and the letter V. Click add. Click save. Before we can test our work, we must do one more thing. Go back to the main page and click the cakewalk button. Select navigation from the menu and click the go to page action. Click the drop down menu and select the cakewalk shortcuts page. Now when you press the cakewalk button, the first action will open cakewalk and the second action will change touch portal to the cakewalk shortcuts page. Click the cakewalk button on your tablet to see the actions run. Once cakewalk is loaded, open a project. When you click the console button, cakewalk will switch to the console view. When you click the track button, the track pane will be displayed. If you change something on the track view, you can undo it by clicking the undo button on your tablet. Finally, 
When we select the audio track and click the macro button, the track will be copied, a new track will be inserted, and the audio data will be pasted to the new track instantly. Now that you know how to set up buttons to run actions, let's make the buttons a little more visually pleasing by adding graphics to them. To add graphics to the buttons, click a button and go to button image. From there, you have a choice of selecting an image from a file on your computer or using an icon pack. For the tutorial, I'll use images I created. If you wish to create your own, most image formats will work. When I choose the image, you'll see it load on the button. The last thing there is to do is to go to background settings and toggle it off. Now when you refresh your tablet, you'll see the images on the buttons. We'll repeat this process for the remaining buttons. I hope you enjoyed learning how to program Touch Portal to control Cakewalk. With a little planning, you can use Touch Portal to streamline your recording sessions. Before we end, if you would like to see more videos like this, hit like, then click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you will be notified when new content is released. From all of us at Guitar School Live, we would like to thank you for watching.